This is a Good Time Charlie production. I'm supposed to take advantage of the lockdown to make this show great again. What happened instead is that it's Apple a podcast info somehow got corrupted. So it wasn't available on the largest podcast platform and no one could listen. Now look, this is for me a hobby. I don't do it for the spins, but getting single digit listens was a bit disheartening to say the least. Well, while working on another show's back end, I thought let's take a look at a podcast cast and see if maybe something could be done. Step one, moving hosting. This show is now on Anchor. If you didn't know, it's a hosting service owned by Spotify. Step two, fix the Apple issue and spread the show out to other services. We should be good to go on Google, Amazon, and Stitcher. And step three, start scripting episode two so that I can record my VO and start stitching together an episode. So here we are, ready to bring back again our podcast love child. As I write this, we're nearing the end of summer, a time that for me is a bit melancholy. I dig summer, swimming and fresh fruit, road trips, and at least in my part of the world, being able to exercise outdoors. It's a time I always cherish, and when it's gone, I always miss. So I thought, why not discuss some summertime hip-hop bangers, share my own personal top five summer jams, What was the first summer jam? And why does summer seem to be the time when hip hop shows off the most? Well, let's find out together. Hip-hop itself is a summer baby, and a Leo to be exact. Born on August 11th, 1973, it makes perfect sense that summer jams would be an essential part of hip-hop's lineage. The first commercially successful hip-hop song dropped in the summer, albeit late in the summer and nearing fall, just like this episode. But, Rapper's Delight, all 14 minutes, 35 seconds, and 10 verses of it totally slides in just under the bell to be a summer jam. Now what you hear is not a test, I'm rapping to the beat. And me, the groove, and my friends are gonna try to move your feet. You see, I am Wonder Mike, and I like to say hello. Up to the black, to the white, the red, and the brown, the purple, and yellow. But first, I gotta... Let's leap forward 10 years to the summer of 1989. Bush Senior was in the White House. The Soviets finally left Afghanistan. Students demonstrated in Tiananmen Square. And Spike Lee's third movie, Do the Right Thing, was released. Along with it, an amazing soundtrack anchored by the public enemy song, Fight the Power. Fight the Power is such an amazing song even all these years later. Pulling from Shea Serrano's The Rap Yearbook, a resource I'm sure to call on often for episodes like this, is a list of accolades that Fight the Power has received in the years since its release. These include being included on the list of the 500 songs that shaped rock and roll by the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. It's considered the seventh best rap song of all time, according to Rolling Stone, and the greatest hip-hop song ever, according to VH1. Just to name a few. In my own life, 
It is my first summer jam and still means the world to me. On July 14th, 1990, Troy Dixon fell from an exit ramp at the Market Square Arena in Indianapolis, Indiana. The fall was from nearly two stories up, and the next day, he died from injuries sustained from the accident. Nearly two years later, the dynamic duel of Pete Rock and C.L. Smooth's They Reminisce Over You, parenthetical Troy, hit number one on Billboard's Hot Rap Tracks. I reminisce for a spell, or shall I say think back? Yeah. 22 years ago to keep it on track. Uh-huh. The birth of a child on the 8th of October. Like a toast, but my granddaddy came sober. Please Count all the fingers and the toes. Now I, I kid you not, this song will one day be played at my funeral. It's so good, so dope, and it gets wild spins even to this day. What a lovely way to say goodbye to a loved one in a glorious classic of a hip-hop banger. The song samples a cover of Jefferson Airplane's Today. The cover is by Tom Scott off his 1967 album, The Honeysuckle Breeze, that itself was released at the tail end of summer. So this one is like a double summer jam. Even though it was released in November of 1992, its video makes nothing but a G thing, a quintessential summer jam. It's a backyard barbecue with drinks being spilled, blunts being rolled, games being played all over a genre defined Leon Haywood sample G funk beat. It hit number one on the rap and hip hop charts in late March of 1993, setting it up to become one of the songs of the summer that year. A year later, the then preeminent hip hop radio station Hot 97 found it what still to this day is the show of shows, Summer Jam. Now, other radio stations had also had summer jams, but it seems like HOTS is the one that has stuck around the longest. And it's pretty much the first thing that comes to mind when you think hip hop music festivals. Being on the summer stage screen has proven to be either amazing for an artist's career or the beginning of the end when another MC takes advantage of the grand stage to dish you and dish you hard. Hmm, the diss track. That seems to be something that deserves some attention, doesn't it? We shall see. I think you kind of catch my vibe, right? Hip-hop and summer go together like lamb and tuna fish. 
One of y'all laughed at that. And don't think I'm not grateful. Oh, yes. The McTerrific pair. They went together like lamb and tuna fish. Hip hop and summer are like backyard barbecues, far too sweet Kool-Aid, watermelon and hot dogs that just plump enough to split fresh off the grill. They belong together and are all the better when experienced outside. Summer and hip hop can be the chillest of vibes, the danciest of rhythms, or a time when everyone finds out that you did blackface and have been hiding a child. It is seemingly the most important time for hip hop. And even now, nearly 50 years since its birth, is the time when individuals release their music. It's the time when students are out of school and can concentrate on the lyricism and DJs discover which beats go up at the function. It's what people will play on their road trips or flights to their vacation getaways. Summer is the season of hip hop, but you know what it is here. So here are my personal top five summer jams. My rules for what constitute a summer jam are a bit looser than the ones regarding posse cuts. I figure if it charted during the summer or was released during the Northern Hemisphere's summer months, holy smokes, it just hits me that in the global South, all I want for Christmas is a summer jam. That's just super dope, but allow me to continue. If the song is specifically about summer, it's a summer jam. That's it. Those are the rules we have established. So here are my top five summer jams. The aforementioned public enemy banger, Fight the Power. I legit owned the casingle for this, and I remember copping it from the same mall my mom copped a gyro she snuck into the theater to eat while we watched Roger Rabbit. No, not the same year, but those memories simply merged together because of Severance Mall over in Cleveland Heights, Ohio. What if that's still around? Elvis was a hero to most, but he never meant shit to me as she straight out racist. The sucker was simple and plain. Motherfucking in John Wayne. Cause I'm black and I'm proud. Already I'm hyped for some amp. Most of my heroes don't appear in no stamp. An all-time classic that got far too little burn for the first summer since its release, probably due to the artist penchant for award show-based violence, DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince's Summertime is not only a fantastic summer jam, but it's also hands down one of the greatest hip hop songs ever. Just a bit of a break from the norm. Just a little something to break the monotony of all that hardcore dance that has gotten to be a little bit out of control. It's cool to dance, but what about a groove that soothes and moves romance? Give me a soft, subtle mix. And if it ain't broke, then don't try to fix it. And think of the summers of the past. Adjust the Look, the summer this joint dropped, it was over for y'all. It was also, unfortunately, the last time we got to see Chad Butler, better known as Pimp C, alive on film. But boy, was he alive in 2007's International Players Anthem. Parenthetical, I choose you. The song is all South all the time. It's a Memphis's own Juicy J and DJ Paul track originally produced for Project Pat's Choose You, but flipped by Houston's underground kings Pimp C and Bun B, with an assist from Atlanta's outcast, Dre 3000 and Big Boy. A subtle but brilliant flip of Willie Hutch's I Choose You, this became a black wedding anthem in real short order, and 15 years on still gets burned. I own this one on Texas Shape Vinyl, just in case you were wondering.
I feel like heads knew about the mash out posse well before the general public. But when Funk Flex dropped the bomb that was the DR period produce Annie Up, parenthetical Robin Hood's theory, the world took notice of Brownsville, Brooklyn zone M O P. Jamal, Lil Fame Greenwich, and Eric Billy Dance Murray made sure the summer of the year 2000 was going out in style. I know a lot of people that appreciate the remix, but the original is the one. My number one summer jam is off of Memphis Bleak's 2005 album, 534. Though Bleak does not appear on the track, it is instead one of the founders of the label the record was released on, Getting It In. The Just Blaze produced Dear Summer by one Sean Carter, you know, Jay-Z, is quite possibly one of my favorite songs ever. The beat samples Weldon Irvin's Morning Sunshine, and it's basically one single verse but it has an interlude that Mr. Carter speaks over before finishing up with the track. It's nearly three minutes of hip hop perfection and it's definitely something you want to spend before heading into autumn. Episode 2 of Volume 2 of a pod called Cass. This one, of course, is titled Dear Summer. And we certainly hope you enjoy it. Uh, we will be back. We have a we have some things scheduled. Don't worry. We got things going on. I don't know how often the show will go up. I'm not saying it's going to be a weekly deal or a monthly deal. It just will come when it comes. And when it does, I hope you'll enjoy it. So just add it to your podcatcher and give it a listen whenever you are so inclined. As always, you can give us a call if that is uh, something you think you want to do. It's 216-264-6311. That's 216-264-6311. We'd certainly love to hear from you. And if you want to shoot us an email, it's a pod called cast at gmail.com. Give us a follow over on Twitter at a pod called cast. We're out here trying to do the damn thing and uh, be more present in your life. If you listen on Spotify, you should see some kind of uh, poll and uh, an episode uh, question, you know, that you can respond to. Maybe uh, what is definitely going to be, what is your summer jam? But for the rest of the team here at Team Skim, thanks for listening. We'll catch you next time. Peace. Thank you.